I'm Jeff Alban, the Big Game Hunter. I'm the head coach for Job Search, CoachingHQ.com, and NoBSCoachingAdvice.com. I've done career and leadership coaching. I've worked with businesses being more effective, uh, or helping them be more effective. And I wanted to do a video today about, well, soft skills, because I think the temptation culturally throughout the world is you have to demonstrate your knowledge. Now, I don't want to diminish that at all. You have to know your subject, right? You have to know what it is you claim to have the expertise to do in order to be hired. However, we all know there are a lot of incompetent people who get hired. So what else is a company looking for? And that's really the, in the realm of the soft skills. Now, for years, I've said that there are a number of variables that companies look for when they hire. Competence only being one of them. Self-confidence, character, chemistry, maybe a little bit of charisma. These tend to be the primary variables that firms look for. So when you're interviewing, I want you to remind yourself going in, not just simply about what you know, but a couple of these variables. Now, the first one is, what does your body language project? Now, you can be the slumped over guy uh, uh, who, you know, kind of wanders around looking kind of beaten up. But is that really the image that you want to project? Do you want to look like, in effect, a loser? No, you don't want to do that. You want to carry yourself physically from the time of the first handshake until the end of the interview in a manner that demonstrates nothing that would distract them. Follow? I didn't say you know, that you look like a winner or might act like a loser, but you just want to carry yourself in a way that doesn't distract them with some other quality. Your oral communications need to be extremely strong. Now, part of the way to do that is practicing your answers to predictable questions in advance of the interview. Now, I want to be clear. When I say practice, I don't mean think the answer. I mean speak the answer. Ideally, speak it to another individual, because the more you do that, the more self-confident you appear, right? Because it's familiar to you. There's nothing unique. And you can practice the pauses, the inflections, the hesitations in your answer. So that in this way, you show self-confidence. You know, for years I've said great athletes all have, uh, have um, coaches. And they all practice, right? Like LeBron. LeBron is on the court practicing six days a week. He eats a particular way seven days a week during the season and for part of the, the off season, all to be ready for game time. Great entertainers all have coaches and they all rehearse. And job hunters go on interviews and the first time the words are ever coming out of their mouth are at the interview. You see why you're failing? You don't practice. You don't rehearse. And part of what this will do is ex exhibit self-confidence because you're familiar with the material. It's kind of like when you got tested and you were school in school and did your homework and suddenly they ask you the question that you'd practice the answer for a hundred times and you say to yourself, I got this one. Well, it's the same thing on an interview. This soft skill comes across very well. And with that, I want to remind you about the quality of appearing happy. Now, I'm not saying that you should sit there with a big smile on your face like an idiot, but I am suggesting that through your manner and through your self-confidence, you carry yourself with happiness. People like to hire happy people. They don't want to hire Debbie or uh, Donnie Downer, right? They want to hire people who exude a certain quality that they want to be around. Now, another thing, and this is an interesting one because I haven't really worked on this uh, before, but I'm going to start adding this into my repertoire. They like to hire resilient people. And in resilience, we're talking about bouncing back from adversity. How can you do that in the course of your interviews? Easy. It's in the course of telling the story. Now, sometimes there is no episode of resilience that occurs in a success that you had. But I don't want you to ignore the opportunity to tell a bounce back story. A story where 
And the model that I teach is situation, objective, action, result. So what was the situation you stepped into and what was your objective? What was the action that you took and what was the result? Now, resilience is really in the form of, was there a stumble in there? Was there a moment where there was a question as to whether this would get pulled off and how you wound up pulling it all together? So, you know, you might have the situation where suddenly out of the blue, we had to make a, you know, a, a 180 turn and go in a completely di different direction, all because someone had said, okay, I'm not quite sure I, like, I want this. I want to do it this way now. And you could have fought them tooth and nail, but instead you want to deliver the outcome. So you mobilize the team, you got them in a completely different direction, and you're able to deliver not only on time, but a little bit ahead of time because we were able to work cohesively instead of really Oh, the horror, the dread, the you know, that sort of thing. Now, in your work life, I want to mention one other thing that I think is also important. Because resilience shows up in your work life. Happiness shows up in your work life. The ability to communicate with self-confidence. Your body language shows up there. But there's one extra thing that I want to bring to your attention. And that's quality time management skills. I'm not suggesting that you keep it a rigid structure to your day. But I am suggesting that where you can work a quality time management system into your repertoire and work it into your stories, which can be from a project management standpoint, how you organized the project. It can also be from the standpoint of day-to-day -day operations, how you're more effective in your work because you have an effective time management system. These are, this is a good thing to add to your repertoire. So I hope you found this helpful. If you didn't, you're watching on YouTube, click the like button. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, notice there's a little icon down there. Just click the icon, subscribe. You'll get notices whenever I release a new video or, or podcast for that matter. Also want to mention that if you're interested in my coaching, you reach out to me through LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the big game hunter. Mention that you saw the video, especially if you're outside of the U.S. I like knowing that I'm helping people. And frankly, because I'm bumping up against LinkedIn's limitations for a number of connections that you can have, I don't accept connection requests outside of the U.S. unless you mention some way that, that you found out about me. Lastly, if you have questions for me that I could be helpful with, uh, reach out to me through an app called Magnify. That's M-A-G-N-I-F-I. It's an iOS-only app or through PrestoExperts.com. Best to connect with me first on LinkedIn. Message me there to schedule, and this way, you know, I don't wind up missing a call from you. Hope you have a great day. Take care.